All right. Welcome, 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 everyone, to the Wells Fargo Beyond College webinar series. So excited to have you all join us today as we talk about building a strong leadership brand. So with that being said, we are going to introduce none other than Mr. Dewey Norwood. Ashley, thank you so much for the kind introduction, and we're so excited to be working with you and the amazing TMCF team and our amazing Wells Fargo leaders for what's going to be a great discussion today around building a strong leadership brand. And so, team, one of the things that we want to do right at the top is just to remind everyone that today's webinar is being recorded. So if you choose not to participate in a recorded webinar, now is a great time for you to politely disconnect. And at the same time, over the next two weeks or so, we'll be posting a link to this webinar on the TMCF YouTube channel. For anyone that's watching this playback, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about the content that we've shared today, please do not hesitate to contact our Wells Fargo team or our great partners over at TMCF, the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. All right, the disclaimer is taken care of with everything. You all will see on the next slide my contact information. This also has my LinkedIn QR code, so feel free to scan. Special thanks to the students that, that reach out. I have a lot of folks that, that send over notes. It's always great to get feedback from you on this content that we've shared and to, to hear about the great things that you all are, are, are doing. As we continue, want to spotlight just briefly a little bit about Wells Fargo. So if there's some takeaways on this slide, $1.9 trillion in assets, one in three households, one in three across the U.S. is going to have a banking relationship in some way, shape, or form with our institution. That also includes one in 10 small businesses here in the U.S. So really, really important things happen, happening there. You'll see a lot of our great lines of business that are referenced here, uh, and also our firm's commitments around giving back to our, our local communities, so whether it's around housing affordability or small business growth, whether it's around financial health or financial wellness or the work from, an, uh, from, the, from the, uh, I will call it from an environmental perspective, or certainly the work that we're doing in higher ed, we're appreciative of having an opportunity to, to serve you all in these different capacities. Along the lines of higher ed, you'll see some details on the next slide, just simply spotlighting our firm's commitments. And when you look at this, I hope you smile when you see you know, over $106 million that our firm has provided over the last 10, 12 years or so in support of students as they're heading along their higher education journey. And so also happy to report that now over $32 million has gone towards supporting great groups like Thurgood Marshall and UNCF, Jackie Robinson Foundation, and other groups that are connecting in to support HBCU students. So pretty significant there. Always good to, to take a moment to spotlight those numbers of things. You know, we, gotta, we always love to shine a light on something fun within our institution. So on the next slide, you'll see a few details about our Wells Fargo HBCU Legends card collection. This is a really special collection that our firm has put together in celebration of historically black colleges and universities. Happy to report some of the universities that, that we saw on today's call from a registration perspective are either in <laughs> our car design studio or will be coming in the days ahead. So just really excited about this work. The next slide will actually show you a spotlight of some of these amazing schools. And I won't read all of them, but you'll see lots of great institutions listed here. The ones on the far right-hand side are all of the new brands that are going to be launching here for us during the first week of September. So for any Wells Fargo customers that are out there, jump out to the Card Design Studio, customize your banking experience with one of our amazing HBCU Legends cards. And huge shout out to our buddy, uh, Tamika Lindsay and Damon Ford, and also to the TMCF and USCF team, teams that helped us get all of these amazing cards up and going. All right, speaking of amazing, I feel like I need to do a drum roll here to bring on our, our good buddy in Betsy Burton Strong. Betsy, I guess the real question is, which of those cards do you have uh, on the I, HBCU list? <laughs> well, I gotta say, Dewey, I think everybody immediately noticed that in the second column, the third the third down was the TMCF card. Of course. Thurgood Marshall College Fund card, which I know everybody is running to the design studio to order now. So thank you all very much for that. Uh, anyways, as Dewey said, my name is Betsy Burton Strunk. I'm our Vice President of Development at Thurgood Marshall College Fund. I actually started 
my life, my professional life working at Wachovia, which is the predecessor company, one of the predecessor companies to Wells Fargo. So when I get to do these calls, it feels like an like old home week, even though now I'm old. Anyhow, so Thurgood Marshall College Fund, we've been around and we're celebrating our 35th year this year, which is really just an extraordinary opportunity for us to do amazing work on behalf of our students. Sorry, that's my kid. I have a 16 year old who apparently needs something right away. Uh, anyways, we, we've been in business for 35 years working with the 47 publicly supported HBCUs, providing scholarship opportunities, internships, professional development opportunities, really focused on economic mobility and creating opportunities to move to the middle class and, and upward. Um, as Dewey said, Wells Fargo has been an incredible partner of ours, providing millions and millions, I don't know, maybe billions one day in support for our organization, which is really crucial for our ability to provide opportunities for students. So we're really fortunate to be able to have that. And what you'll see on the next slide is really a focus on our mission. We're really driven by our mission in ensuring student success by promoting educational excellence. And that's not just what happens in the classroom. It's not just what happens in our workshops, but it happens and beyond college webinar series and other opportunities to continue your professional development. I participate in these series and I take notes because the people you're gonna to listen to, including Dewey, some might argue differently, but including Dewey, you're gonna hear amazing nuggets that will help you along your journey, wherever you are. If you're in high school, if you're in college, if you're 35 years into your career, you're gonna always be able to take away something if you're always seeking educational excellence. And our goal of preparing the next generation of workforce talent, making sure that we're providing significant opportunities for leadership development. So please connect with me on LinkedIn and please connect with Dewey on LinkedIn. If you've participated in these webinars before, you know, Dewey likes to challenge and see who can get the most LinkedIn connections at each of these events. So you know, I, I hope to have the most LinkedIn connections. So I'm quite certain that the second we get off, we'll be able to uh, have this little battle. So without further ado, I'm going to send you back to the delightful and handsome Mr. <laughs> Dewey Norwood. Betsy, thank you so much and really appreciative of all of the partnership and, and the great engagement that, that we've been able to have. So just some final reminders, you know, we're back to campus. We touched on the recording reminder just a moment ago. So again, thanks for, for allowing us to, to get that important component done. But hey, we're back to campus. Many of you all are back in classes. And so I want to commend you on all that you've accomplished over the summer. And now listen, it's time to get back to business. It's time to handle business in a great kind of a way now that you're back on your respective college campuses. And so, so welcome back. From a by the numbers perspective, 178. 178 was our was our final number here before, but I know we'll have some additional folks that will be joining the, uh, during our 90 minutes or so here for today. So just special thanks uh, again to all those that registered. I always love to do the roll call. You know, we got you can't go without the roll call, right? Got to spotlight some of the, the top universities here. So uh, let's see. Again, I'm, and I'm looking through my numbers on this. I think it was a close race today between Harvard and also UCLA as our top registrants here for today. So shout out to our friends out on out in LA and to our friends up, at, up in Cambridge, Mass. NYU, my mom's old stomping grounds there down in the village. A lot of shout outs to, to, to NYU. Uh, Loyola Marymount University, also in the mix here from a numbers perspective today. So huge shout out to LMU. And we, you know, we have to acknowledge one of our HBCUs here, North Carolina A and T, uh, which is counting down the days towards GHO, G H O E. And I'm not saying nothing bad. You can look up GHO and see what we mean by that. But that's the greatest homecoming on earth. And so, shout out to our friends in the Greensboro area. Hey, listen, what to expect? We're going to be spending a lot of time talking about branding components today. We're going to touch on the three D's of your leadership brand. We're also going to talk about turning a personal brand or your personal brand into a leadership brand. When we get to the end of the call, we'll give you some reminders. We'll give you some additional details 
that you need to be connecting in on, please remember, the Q&A chat is open for business. And as well, the chat feature is open. I see lots of great comments coming in there. So thank you all. Please note, if you submit questions to us real time, we're not going to read your name out on the broadcast. This is just the best practice that we have, especially with the recording going on. So please know you can submit those questions to us in confidence and we're not going to read your name, rank or serial number out when we present those questions. Of course, if you drop something into the chat, individuals can see those kinds of things. Uh, but again, we will not be reading your names directly in those kinds of areas. So this is a safe space for you to submit questions. And again, at the end, we'll give you some details around some of our additional webinars, how you can access that great content on the TMCF YouTube channel. And hey, get social with us. If something jumps out to you, from Shalane and Michelle's presentation today, jump onto social, you know, at mention our friends, maybe in your post, uh, and certainly use that hashtag WFC Beyond College and also hashtag TMCF. All right, enough of me. We want to get to the real stars of today's broadcast, and you'll see them here featured on the next slide. We've got our good buddy, Shalane Carter, a great partner of ours in our Wells Fargo Human Resources team. And we also have Michelle Devane Brown, a great partner of ours from our corporate and investment banking world. These partners boast team over 50 years of corporate experience. And yes, as the joke goes, they started when they were 16. Uh, so these were amazing leaders. And I think they're going to take us through what's going to be some really, really great content. So Shalane, Michelle, thank you all so much for being on. So, Lane, I think we're going to hand the reins over to you for, for introductions and to begin everything here for today. So take it away, my friend. Thank you, Dewey. And thank you out there to everyone that's joining us. I'm delighted to be here. My name is Shalane Carter, and I'm a vice president and senior HR business partner supporting our corporate and investment banking business. I'm based in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I've been with Wells Fargo for nine years, and they've been nine wonderful years. But as Dewey mentioned, I have a lot more years of experience even prior to joining Wells Fargo. And feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I love staying connected with people people that have participated in these webinars. And I'm going to turn it over to Michelle. Thanks, Shalane. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. My name is Michelle Devon Brown. I'm happy to be here and share this time with you. I've been with Wells Fargo for 10 years now, and I am the development officer leader here within our corporate investment, um, corporate and investment banking division. Uh, what does that mean? That means that I provide strategic and tactical support to our leadership uh, around talent development, around recruiting, uh, retention, as well as DEI priorities. So I'm happy to be here. And um, Shalane, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Michelle. Now we're going to have a little fun. We definitely want this webinar to be interactive. So we're going to go on to the next slide and launch a polling question. So according to Cantar's brand Z, top 100 most valuable U.S. brands for 2022, what is the number one most trusted brand? And I see some responses already coming in. We'll give it a few more seconds. Okay, it's looking good. I'll give it a couple more seconds. I think people are still making their selections. All right. So it looks like most people have picked Wells Fargo. Glad to hear that. Uh, second is Apple. Uh, about 42% have selected Apple, then McDonald's, and Amazon and Verizon. So I'll tell you which one is correct. So for 2022, the number one most trusted brand is Apple. So, uh, and it varies every year. So last year when we did this, it was actually Amazon was number one. And as you can imagine, uh, closely tied to the pandemic, everyone was using Amazon to order supplies and anything and everything. And so this year, Apple's moved to the top spot. Um, it was number two last year. Google is actually number two this year. And Amazon fell to number three. McDonald's is number six. Verizon is number 
15. And Wells Fargo is number 55 on the list. But I'm proud to say we're ahead of other large financial institutions. Chase was 68 and Bank of America was on number 69. But just to tell you a little bit about this poll, Miller Brown's brand valuation analyses provide strong evidence of the importance of branding for business leaders. A brand is about reputation. It generates trust for a company, for its products, and for its services. The brands mentioned in the Brand Z U.S. Top 100 list are the world's most trusted brands. And now that we're talking about companies, we all think about companies having brands. But did you know that people also have those brands? And so we're going to um, go on to the next slide and talk a little bit about personal branding. So you'll see some names load onto the screen. But the important part is to think of people have brands as well. So when you see some of these names, there might be words that come to mind. I see LeBron James on there. Jennifer Lopez. Constance, Constance, Constance Wu, Tom Brady, Mark Zuckerberg. Um, and I'm sure when you read these names, there are different things that might come to mind about these people. And so when you think of them, what you're thinking about is their personal brand. And so take a minute to consider what if your name was on this list? What words would come to mind for people who know you or have interacted with you? And can you influence what people think of you and how they see you? And the good news is you absolutely can. Next slide, please. On this slide, we're just going to go over some key definitions and concepts. Personal branding is the practice of people marketing themselves and their careers as brands. It is, in, it is the intentional effort to create and influence public perception of an individual. Effective personal branding positions a person in a place of authority and elevates their credibility and different, differentiates them from competitors. Now, your leadership brand conveys your identity and distinctiveness as a leader. It is created by the way you behave, react, and interact. It's linked to your effectiveness as a leader. Your brand reflects your priorities and the values you stand for. Now, where these two concepts intersect is your leadership brand is how your personal brand plays out in the process of displaying leadership. It's how you work with others to produce results. Next slide, please. Here's one more polling question. So I want you to answer, the question is, I have intentionally built a personal leadership brand for myself. You have the option of A, I've built one and it works well for me. B, I've been thinking about one. I've even written down a couple of thoughts. C, I've heard about personal brands. I'm a little intrigued. And D, nope, I haven't started on the personal print personal brand journey just yet. And so we'll give it a few seconds to allow the responses to come in. And don't be shy. Feel free to be honest. That's why we're here to learn and share. And so far, it looks like B has slightly that's fluctuating. About 32% have said B, which means they're thinking about one. They've written down a couple of thoughts. And it's a two-way tie for the second one. So C and D are tied. And then A, 19%, luckily, have reported that they've built one and it works well for them. So I'm thankful to the 19% that have decided to still join because it's always great to continue learning, uh, and to continue to evolve on your, your journey of developing your personal brand. But I'll give you some research stats. According to some research, it seems that very few people have taken formal action of building and managing their personal brand. Actually, less than 15% of people have truly defined their personal brands, and fewer than 5% are consistently personalizing and growing it. We believe that if people knew the power that comes with a strong brand, the numbers would surely grow. Just think about it. A top selling product cannot get there without a powerful brand. The same is true for people. 
Now I'm going to turn it over to Michelle and she's going to give you more details about personal and leadership branding. Thanks, Shalane. I appreciate that. I am, I am impressed with the 19% for sure. Uh, so Shalane just walked us through the definition of a personal brand and a leadership brand. And in order to develop a leadership brand, you must first start with yourself and your personal brand. And then you can overlay that with um, the effectiveness in what uh, is involved in leading others to help guide you in developing your, your leadership brand. The development of a personal brand requires some personal reflection and also reaching out to others to get their input. Uh, we want to give you some tangible steps that you can take away um, and to help you build and develop that personal brand. There are three key steps to developing a personal brand. We call them the three Ds, as Dewey said. Uh, this is where you do the work, and they are discover, which is what do you know about yourself? How do others see you? Um, what do you want your personal brand to say? Then there's define, which involves extracting what you discovered about yourself and how others see you, and then define your brand into something that is impactful. And then what do you want to be known for? And finally do, that is the action stage, right? This is where you make it happen. You have to develop a plan for your brand. Um, how are you going to express your brand? How do you become an expert in it? What is the, your self-motivation and marketing strategy for it? What are your goals and objectives? Um, is it to get a job, to get a promotion, to be an entrepreneur, to obtain a leadership role, et cetera? So we will take a deeper dive into each of these over the next slides. So on the next slide here, where we talk about discovery, in order to define your brand, it's critical that you take an assessment of yourself. And that is required both inside and outside. You need to get with other perspectives to get other perspectives in order to feel confident about how you bring what you bring to the table, how you bring it to the table, and knowing how other people actually perceive you. This will also help as you develop your brain. And more importantly, um, it will help you to ensure that you deliver on that brand. Your brand is the story people think about when they hear your name. So it's important to communicate your value through your personal brand. From an internal perspective, it's about taking some time to identify who you are. What words describe you? What makes you unique? What are your passions? What drives you? What motivates you? What inspires you? So I encourage you to write down maybe 10 or 15 words that describe your brand as you think it is today in whatever context you want to use for this, whether it's life, whether it's, it's work, whether it's school. Um, think about uh, cross dimensions, competencies, for example, like marketer or speaker or coach researcher or manager. Um, think about standards, how you want to deliver against those competencies, such as an industry expert or subject matter expert, um, someone who's always learning, creative, someone who's innovative, um, someone who's analytical. And then also think about styles. Are you direct, casual? Are you confident, poised, inspiring? And just think about those cross dimensions. And then once you have taken an assessment of yourself, then take a look outward because your brand is how others perceive you. You have to learn where you are today and then kind of what is your reputation? How do people perceive you? What do you think about, what do, what do they think about you? Um, what do people really think about you? And uh, I think that this can be exhilarating. I think it could be eye-opening and maybe humbling. Most people are aware of their development opportunities. I don't refer to them as weaknesses. I think their development opportunities is we all have something we can grow and, and um, enhance and hone in on. And it's their strengths that they don't often articulate well. 
you're likely to learn about strengths and you may not realize you have them. What you'll want to do is to get a 360 review, asking others um, what words they use to describe you. You can go online and you can search on descriptive words lists from a personal brand exercise. Literally, if you Google it, descriptive words list for a personal brand exercise and something will pop up. Then identify at least 15 words, maybe 20 to 30 would be even better for an assessment. Then I would say um, that 360 degree, I mean, that you reach out to your network. So when you're asking others, that network could be in different contexts. It could be friends, it could be teachers, coaches, teammates, siblings, parents, classmates, your community, et cetera. Send that word list um, that you've identified and ask them to select words that they associate with you. Once you have a good amount of responses, you can evaluate to see where there, path, where there are patterns, which words were selected a lot more than others that may, be pre, may, be, may present a, a consistent thing. But remember, their perception is their reality. Finding out that other people um, see you differently than you see yourself can be enlightening. Another way to do this is to have informal conversations with your network. Ask what they think are your strengths and areas of opportunities. You will learn a lot through these uh, kind of engaging conversations. Then once you've discovered um, yourself, both inside and from the outside in, as we move to the next slide, it's time to then take that discovery and crystallize it to define your brain. Defining your brand is about narrowing in. It's about making a choice. It's about bringing the uniqueness of you forward. Um, what is the takeaway you want people to say about you from their interactions with you? What is it you're going to say about yourself? This is your personal brand. And it's not just words. Um, it has to be demonstrated by your actions and it must be authentic. And it, an effective brand occurs at the intersection of your personal strengths and the impact you will have in the lives of people you interact with. Remember, your brand must add value. Uh, consider your primary audience. What do they need and how do how can you meet that need? This is called positioning your brand. Take the reflections and the words that you gather and form them into a couple of things outlined on this slide. And the first one um, is a power statement. A power statement is something that you might, very, might be very useful in an interview. Uh, let's say the interviewer asks you to tell them about yourself and why they should select you um, and not another candidate. And that's where that power statement can be, can come into play. Another tool is the me in 30 seconds or the elevator speech as I like to call it. And it's basically a longer version of that power statement where you can talk through some bullets. And finally, uh, going the other direction, challenge yourself to create uh, a brand promise to really get to the essence of your brand. And it can also be in the form of a tagline. Um, think about company brands you've seen. Uh, Target has um, expect more and pay less. Uh, examples of personal brand promises could be the insight to guide, the compassion to inspire or smart ideas put into action. You know, so if you think about smart ideas put into action, what comes to mind for me is that someone is innovative and creative and um, has a vision and is able to come up with these smart ideas, but also is able to execute and deliver on those and put that into action. Defining your brand pays off in the ability to communicate about yourself and live up to your own goals. And remember, your brand can evolve over time. You may discover that um, what your brand was, maybe it now needs some refinements or adjustments as your passions and as your interests change. As we move to the next slide, once you have defined what your personal brand stands for, then you have to make every effort to build it and reinforce your message. 
with every interaction you have the opportunity to enhance, to highlight your personal brand and to consistently live up to it. And on this slide, this is the action slide, the last step, the do. At this point, you've discovered a ton about yourself. Um, you've defined the brand uh, that you want to live out in your interactions. And now it's time to put in the work um, to reflect your brand across all of your interaction points. So there, there are three areas here that I want to touch on about how do you, what do you do? And first is brand hygiene. Use photos online and your work profiles that reflect your brand, what you want to be known for, what you want people to think about you. Um, how do you want to be perceived? Are you approachable? Are you serious? Um, are you kind, professional, casual, creative? Just think about that. The example that I use is, let's say on LinkedIn, which is your personal profile, social media, you have a picture of... Um, being at a cookout or a barbecue or something. That might not be the best for someone who wants to convey, convey professionalism in a corporate America environment. However, if your brand is around um, cooking, if it's around uh, event planning, being a foodie or, or leisure travel or something like that, then it would be a great photo to include. So you have to think about where you're trying to go and what you want that brand to represent. Update your resume um, to make sure that that reflects the story that you're trying to tell and that it pops up on that page. The second is a network in your brand territory. Look for opportunities to develop further into your brand and participate in events or activities that connect you with what you want to be known for. Associations um, will create a brand halo. In other words, um, you'll derive brand equity from others and from those organizations. For example, if you want to be um, known as an innovator, then attend innovation seminars or conferences or workshops. Um, start your own innovation group or, or club if there isn't one. Um, give an update on innovative ideas uh, within your organization. Um, write articles, create a blog about innovation, but be involved in the activities and the opportunities that will help you build your brand. Not only will people perceive you as being interested or good at innovation in this case, but you will actually be developing your own competency at the same time. That means actively sharing your story making connections and expanding your network. Leverage those interactions and it will create a growing number of testimonials for you. And people will begin to speak your name when you're not in the room because they associate you with that. And then the last point here is around be the brand. In meetings, in group projects, individual work, et cetera, you must communicate and live up to your brand. If your brand is to be a doer, you're strong in getting things done and executing and driving for completion and quality results. Maybe you dedicate yourself um, to getting things done. Um, every interaction uh, is a moment to take away and build upon your brand. And then if we go to the next slide. And on this slide, now that we've created and you are living your personal brand, the next step is to how do you turn that personal brand into a leadership brand? A leadership brand is externally focused and it's about leading a group or an organization to achieve results. How you come across to others at work is vital to your success. You need to think about what, what does your organization need to accomplish in the next one to five years, for example. Take that personal brand and overlay that with what your organization needs to accomplish. How can you contribute to that um, and make sure that you are leaning into to working with that organization about what it's trying to accomplish? Um, how does the organization need to behave or what can, what can you do to help lead them there? Do you need to be punctual, for example? Maybe it's you need to be strategic or detailed oriented or something collaborative, whatever that is. Um, what within your personal brand 
can you lean into and adjust to create confidence and trust within the organization and unleash the greatness um, of that organization? For example, my, my leadership brand statement is that I deliver beyond the status quo. I do that through strategic decisions, collaboration, and throughout through the ability to deliver quality results. I augment that by inspiring others to bring their whole selves to work, to deliver quality work with a sense of urgency, um, to value other perspectives, and to create an environment um, that they can fill up and that they feel empowered. Your personal brand and your leadership brand are intertwined and may be one and the same. You may adjust over time, as we talked about, but be ready to adjust aspects of your leadership style or your brand to meet the current need of the team. And finally, always make time for listening and reflection. Over time, you need to reevaluate your brand and its effectiveness. Um, are people actually perceiving you the way that you intend? And are you effectively leading teams? Feedback is a gift. And the more you get, the quicker you'll be able to learn, adjust, and achieve results. With that, Shalane and I would like to thank you for giving us the space and giving us your time so we could share our experiences and, and our learnings today. And we hope that you can take at least one idea away from today's uh, presentation. Thank you very much. As we move into QA, I'll turn it back over to you, Dewey. Michelle, thanks a million. I think some really, really great information there. And Shalane, congratulations on, on what I think is some, some really, really good content. Um, a lot of takeaways here. Uh, and it's interesting. It, it seems to me like this is a continual journey. This is not something that you just do today and then all of a sudden your brand is fully refined tomorrow. It seems like there's a, there's a, there's a build out with a lot of these pieces. Would you all agree? Absolutely, Dewey. And as Michelle mentioned, it should definitely evolve over time. Yeah. Like as your passion or interests or your experiences change, so should your personal brands sure. and your leadership brand as well. They should evolve over time and don't be afraid to shift or make changes, especially if your um, personal brand statement no longer meets your needs or speaks to what you're interested in. So definitely it's a lifelong journey. Feel free to make the shift along the way. There you go. There you go. Well, listen, we are going to pivot into Q&A. And for our scholars and partners, we've got a good, nice time frame here for, for some Q&A. And so we're going to bring Ashley Adams back on from the TMCF team. Ashley, I, I guess it's a good time to maybe share a reminder again. Our scholars and participants should utilize the Q&A feature and or should utilize the chat feature to submit questions. We're not going to read their name or information for anything that comes in, but it looks like we've got a little bit of time here to jump into some Q&A. So enough of me. Let's give it to Ashley Adams, everybody. Ashley, please. Absolutely. Make sure you guys, as, as Dewey said, insert those questions into the chat. Yes. Uh, we're going to jump off with the first question. How can you promote yourself without making it sound like a sale? That's a great question. Michelle, you want to start and then I'll go behind you. Sure, I can. I can. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think of it as selling. I would think of it more as marketing yourself. Um, and I think there's a, a big difference in the two. I think that marketing is sharing with people what you can bring to the table, what your brand is, um, how you're able to contribute to whatever their vision is. Um, and so you are humbly marketing yourself versus selling someone trying to convince them you know that this is you i think when you are walking in your personal brand and you're walking and speaking your truth i think that comes through um and you're able to market versus versus selling shalane what are your thoughts i couldn't agree with you more and i would just say as long as you're confident and you're bringing your authentic self it won't come across as a sale. I mean, you definitely have a mission and a goal for whatever group or whoever your audience is, audience is, whether it's an individual or it's a group of people, 
you definitely want to be confident in your personal brand statement and how you're coming across so that they can um, perceive you the way that you want to be perceived and they see you in your mission or your, or your goals. So don't think of it, as Michelle said, like you're selling yourself, but you have to market yourself. If you're not going to market yourself, who else is? And so um, just have that confidence in yourself and the way you're showing up and presenting what you bring to the table and especially with leadership branding you know, it's it's not a it's not selling if you're telling successes and outcomes of your actions. So if you're saying, you know, I helped my organization save X Y Z dollars, that is that's a great thing that people need to know about. And so don't feel like you're selling yourself, but it's up to you to market yourself. Thank you, thank you for that. We have a question in the chat as well. What advice would you give yourself? early career. So what advice would you give yourself if you were early in your career? That's a great question. So I would say, don't be so hard on yourself. Everybody has been new in their career or early in your career. We weren't born managers or leaders. You have to be given that opportunity. So just feel confident knowing that you got to start somewhere. And uh, like I said, be, be confident, but also absorb, be a learner. Like you have to, you're not going to come in day one, expected to know everything. We're all going to make mistakes, but you have to make sure that along the way you're asking questions, you're asking for feedback, you're showing what you've learned and knowledge along the way. And if you do make mistakes, because we're all going to make mistakes, are you learning from those mistakes? So just don't shy away from the experience, like reach out to people, network, ask questions. I can't tell people enough, ask questions. When you're new, your manager, your team, they expect you to ask questions. And a lot of times um, when I've been in meetings with managers and they say, well, they don't ask me anything or, you know, they don't know whether you're gauging and learning or whether you're following. And if you don't ask or you don't demonstrate somehow that you are learning your role, they may not know. And so it's up to you to speak up if something doesn't make sense or it's not clear. Um, it's okay to take notes. I would just say definitely um, reach out, network. And one tip I give to everybody is be kind and gracious to people. Like you'd be surprised the little things like having good manners, saying good morning, saying hello, how's your day? You want to build relationships and rapport with people that you work with. We all spend so many hours out of our day at work. And so you want to get along with and have some common courtesy and rapport with people that you work with because you spend eight to 10 hours with them every day. And people like being around people that are likable and that they like working with. And, and so you definitely just want to bring that common courtesy. I mean, it kind of goes without saying, but you'd be surprised how speaking to someone can go a long way because you never know who you're speaking to. And they could say, oh, I met, you know, Michelle and she's our new analyst. And so, you know, just she was really personable or just positive and cheerful. And, and that makes an impression. You only get one shot to really make that first impression. So that, that'd be my advice. But Michelle? You touched on everything I was going to say. And you, literally everything I was going to say, you touched on. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Shalane. I think that it really, that the kindness piece is is really important. The, the other thing I guess I would add to, and, and the other piece that you mentioned around um, making sure you speak to people because you just never know. And for me, early on in my career, not here at Wells Fargo with, with a, a previous employer, I got on the elevator when we talked about elevator speeches, but I was on the elevator um, and got on the elevator and it was the CEO of the company going all the way to the top floor. Um, and he asked and I said, hello, you know, and he said, hello, good morning. And then he said, what's your name? What do you do? So I had to. So one, I was engaging. Right. By not just getting on the elevator and looking down or staring at the floors as they went up. But I was engaging and, you know, to talk with him. But two, I had that elevator speech ready as well to say, here's who I am and here's what I'm contributing. Um, so I think that speaking to people, you just never, never know. Um, the other thing is sometimes building, building the rapport can be can seem awkward early in your career because you're like, I don't really know how to 
network. I don't know, you know, how do I do that? Do I invite someone for coffee and what do I talk about? Or, you know, so sometimes it can it can feel, you know, a little awkward or, or you know, you're really putting yourself out there. The, the thing that always would get me by is just reading the paper. Now, of course, all, everything's online, but reading the paper and staying current with current events, you can always lean on the news, you know, and, and something to start a conversation. We're going to talk about the colleges. We're going to talk about, you know, the NFL and, and my teams, but, you know, but figure out what that, what that looks like and, and what you can talk about. I would, I would add that too. Actually. That's Thank great. You. I love that undercover boss example because you just never know who you're going to run across. You never know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that. So how do I measure the success or effectiveness of my branding? This is the next question we have. Okay. So I'll start. I would say that kind of goes back to some of the tips that Michelle shared with gathering feedback. Because if you think that your personal brand or you show up a certain way, but then you poll people that are close to you, that interact with you, and they have a completely different word list than what you think you present, then you're not showing up how you think you are. <laughs> and so you need to use it as a learning experience because then there's a way that either you're not coming across the way that you want to. And so you might need to shape how you are showing up or take their feedback and input and maybe um, ensure that you really are living your brand because maybe you do have those attributes, but you just, they just don't see them. And you might show up in, in different settings, different ways. But I think you really have to kind of lean in and get that feedback and input from other people because that's the only way you really learn. And what I, what I add, would add, Ashley, is that there is behavior, right? And what you think you're doing, right? Or what, what you did and then and your intention and then the, the perception. And, and as I, I mentioned earlier, that perception is someone's reality, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the brand you're trying to convey to Shalane's point. So it's good to, to be in tune and to do that assessment and make sure that you are projecting what indeed you, you mean to, to put out there um, about your brand. All right. Am I good? Everyone can hear me okay? Okay. Yeah, All right. Got it. Got it. So next question we have, and um, in community, it can be dog eat dog. How do you navigate when a person or organization is attacking you or your organization? Okay. So I'm thinking about how to answer this one. There's a couple of different ways I'm, I'm thinking about this. So when you say dog eat dog. Okay. So if you're talking about an experience where, you know, you say you're on campus and there's other clubs or organizations or it could be fraternities, sororities, whatever. If you're in an environment where you feel like there's some competition, whether it's healthy or not, I think you can take that as motivation, but don't feed into it. Like you don't ever want to take on the negativity that's projected on you. That's like my mantra in life. And like, I try to stay positive. Of course, I have bad days or there's days I may feel like, gosh, I'm not doing anything right. Or you might feel attacked, but I don't internalize that. Like that thought might come in. I push it right back out of my head and I just know how, who I am and how I want to show up and how i and what you know, you can't rattle me if I don't believe and internalize what you're saying or what you're projecting onto me. So I would say use any negativity or competitiveness as kind of motivation, but definitely don't feed into it. You don't want to react in the same manner that it's projected on you because that can show up as your personal brand as well. Just people will see how you react in situations. And so if you're reacting negatively, it, it, we remember the bad more than we remember the good sometimes. So make sure that you're always showing up as the positive person that you want to be and that you're projecting good. And I see Dewey's got his hand raised. So I know Dewey has some nuggets as well <laughs> to drop in there. Just to, it's just to second everything that you all are, are sharing. Uh, you know, the whole the dog eat dog, that's, that's just real talk, right? <laughs> that's just, that's kind of the, the part of the process. And so, 
No, I, I, listen, you guys have covered off on a lot of items. I'm coming off with two purposes. It's to remind folks to keep dropping items into the, to the Q&A. We'll take a, an, another couple. But if it's okay, I'd like to actually pose the next one, Ashley. Is that all right? All right. Sounds good uh, this, to me. This one is actually a, a really poignant one. And again, special thanks to everyone that's submitting these questions. I think it's really, really helpful. Uh, the particular individual that submitted this talked a little bit about their experience. They've got a little bit more corporate experience. And they now are trying to make some determinations on how you brand yourself in a way that's different than maybe folks interacted with you before. Hey, maybe when you were right out of high school or right out of college or a couple of years of industry, maybe you were kind of doing your things one way, but now you're doing things totally different. How do you get folks to either dismiss or not recognize maybe some of the past challenges or places where you haven't quite done everything perfectly? And then how do you build your brand going forward? Now, there's a lot to unpack with that one. But again, you all bring, the so scholars and participants, you guys ask the tough questions. And this one I thought was really, really a good one. There's about, go first? there's about nine <laughs> layers to that one, too. Know, exactly. so, uh, a, lot, a lot of strings to pull on, but I think it's it, this is an yeah. important one. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's a really important question. Um, I, I would say you just have to show up with who you are in your new space, right? In your, mm. your, your new brand. Yeah. And um, over time your brand, you will be known for, for what that is today versus what it was before. Um, you can only, you can only be yourself. You can only, can, you know, walk in your, in your new brain. You can only walk in what's different. Uh, what's the, the, um, the renewed, the, the reinvention of yourself yeah. or whatever that looks like. Um, you can only walk in that. You can only, um, communicate that when you have an opportunity with with those people um, to say, here's what I'm doing. You know, did you know um, that's where that marketing comes in, that selling, but marketing kind of letting them know working on this project, you know, and this is what I'm doing. Here's what I'm contributing. So I think it's around kind of just um, having a voice and sharing with people what you are doing today that may be different than before. Um, and, and being authentic about that, right? Acknowledging what was and what you, you know, what that new you looks like. And so I think people would appreciate that authenticity in acknowledging your past. And, you know, we all have things that we would do differently. And then, you know, my Angelou said, you know, you know better, you do better. So, you know, you're doing better. I, I think that, that that's what it is for me. Shalane, what else would you add? Yeah, I think that's great advice. And the only thing I would add is um, don't be afraid to pivot and make changes. And I can tell you my career has taken up, down, sideways. Like sometimes you have to make lateral moves to get ahead. And so don't shy away from that and don't feel bad and give yourself grace if your interests change. And that includes you with your career. So if your passion changes, if you're exposed to some other group or work or project and you're like, oh my gosh, I would love to be doing that. Definitely have those conversations with people that are kind of in those roles where you've kind of got your eye on and you might want to pivot to that area and, you know, find out about what do they like? You know, what do you need to get into that? industry or that role or what experience or what background or what knowledge help help them get in that career and then try to position yourself so that you can either if it's possible to ask for projects or work that is kind of tied in or touches on that area have that conversation with your manager from an HR business partner perspective I would say everyone you as an employee you have to own your career now some of us are fortunate enough to have good managers and I try to advise our managers to help with the career development of their employees and talent because it helps with career satisfaction. If you feel like you see a path for yourself or you're doing something that you enjoy, you're going to do better work. You're going to have a better outcome and project. So don't be afraid to pivot and just make sure 
important that you can position yourself. And when I tell you, I've literally worked and I, I thought about it. I've worked in every industry you can think of from hospitals to retail to nonprofits to membership organizations to financial services. You know, and all of it along the way, it took me a while to really realize that HR was my passion. I started out as like a biology pre-med major in college, and I still love medicine and biology, but I ended up with a degree in psychology. And so I worked for the American Psychological Association for five years and still love that work. But when I realized that HR was my passion, my path to get here was like mid-career. I think I was in my Oh gosh, I'm about to tell my eight. <laughs> Don't do that. Maybe <laughs> before Remember, I made a career 8, 14, shift. 16. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to say, but I wasn't afraid that once I realized that's where I want to be. Yeah, I did everything I could. I took courses. I got certifications. I took entry level roles, even though I had been in like in one industry. I was pretty like senior in my career. I went like several steps down but not, I wouldn't say backwards at all ever because you have mm. to take those steps sometimes to get that experience and start over but I've definitely hit the reset button on my career and now I've been able to elevate and grow and be promoted and I, I love the industry and the role that I'm in but don't be afraid to make lateral up down sideways changes at any point in your career okay Michelle Shalane thank you it, it was just especially poignant to me again special thanks to to the folks that are submitting these, these questions for us. Really, really helpful. Really, really helpful. And, and I promise you, you're helping someone else when you're submitting these items. So Ashley, let, let's give it back to you. Um, let's see what else we have in the queue. Let's take a few more if we can. All right. Sounds good. So what are some great ways to brand yourself and your resume to match a particular role if you do not have a lot of internship experience? So how okay. can you, okay. I'll know. start and then I'll let Michelle go. Cause I know she was involved with early talent as well. I used to be a campus recruiter. So I feel like I've given advice on this question a lot. If you don't have work experience, you need to demonstrate that you have other, whether it's transferable skills or experience in like, it could be clubs, organizations, volunteer work, whatever it might be. You want to sell the attributes and the skills that you have from those activities and say you would bring those into the role. So if it's, we'll use our industry, financial services. So if you want to be a financial analyst, but you don't have any banking experience, um, any financial services experience, I would expect if, if you say this is the career you want to be in, I'd expect you to be in some clubs, finance related investment clubs. I'd expect for you to actually maybe attend some seminars or webinars um, maybe even some forums or two-day events or anything along those lines that says, this is really what I'm passionate about. I want to learn more. This is the industry I want to be in. So you have to bring those other skills and experiences and you can list them on your resume. So if you don't have work experience, like don't list, you know, several pages of just every activity you've done, but make it relatable to the role that you're applying for and that you're trying to get. But you can you can be creative and use all of those other experiences to show that this is this is the work I want to do. And here's the knowledge I have or the experience I have that is transferable into this role. Michelle. Yeah, the only other thing I add, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Shalane. I think the only other thing I would add is that, you know, when we look at the resumes, we're looking, you know, maybe you are on the football team or the soccer team or something, and maybe you're the captain of that team. So then you're demonstrating leadership skills, right, by being a captain on that team. Um, so to Shalane's point, I, I echo them that you don't have necessarily, it doesn't have to be this direct relation. It, it really should be something that we can then look at, assess, and pull that you're demonstrating some of those competencies, some of those um key attributes that we're looking for um, based on based on the, the role you're looking for and the company. All right. And this is the last call as we see any more questions. Uh, please drop them in the chat now. Um, I am a multifaceted person. How do you create a brand that doesn't overwhelm people with everything that you do? 
I think it's great to be multifaceted. I think you do need to hone in on, of all of that, what, how do you package that up? What is that? What is the, the primary um, component of your brand, right? So you can be multifaceted. You can be, you know, um, to build, build a brand where there should be some linkage, right? There should be some something that links everything together that then kind of can you can package that up um is what i'd say but i would embrace the the multifacetedness if you will um and and but then say of all of that you know here's that top like we talked about the um, tagline um we talked about you know what is what is that what is that brand statement, that overarching that you then could, um, you know, go into details around some of those other things that should correlate together? Shalane, what are you thinking? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I definitely think it's an asset to be multi, multifaceted, but I would say one word came to mind, relevancy. You want to bring forth, whether it's through conversation or even on your resume, what information is relevant to whatever position you're trying to get or whatever role you're trying to get. And so that's the information you really want to hone in, hone in on, like Michelle said. So be thinking about your audience and the relevancy of the information to that person. If I'm going for a job and it's a HR, another HR leadership position, I may not talk about, you know, other experience I've had if it's not relatable to that role or opportunity. So always just think about and be mindful of the relevancy of the information to the person that you're trying to, um, con you know, convey whatever you're trying to put forward. And so um, just think about that. But there's nothing wrong about with being multifaceted. That's that's actually great. But just make sure that whatever you're highlighting is relevant for whatever you're trying to accomplish. Thank you for that. Um, another question. As a leader, what was the biggest hurdle that you have encountered? <laughs> oh, pause. Let's see. As as a leader, other other than today's webinar, Michelle. Other okay. than today's webinar, <laughs> I, I would say uh, the challenge um, for me, the biggest challenge, uh, pro probably. Um, as a double only, right? As an African American woman in 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 the leadership role, or even prior to that, just in having a seat at the table, that's that's probably um, been the most challenging for me. And um, understanding that, and then figuring out how to pull up to the table, so to speak, you know, and have a seat at the table. Uh, in, in transitioning from, you know, the, the apprehension or the anxiety of being a double only to embracing it and then um, figuring out how I can affect change and make a difference so that I'm not. Um, and so I think that probably, that probably may be um, the biggest challenge for me, I think the other things over my, the course of my career, um, I only have 16 years of that 50 years that Dewey mentioned at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm kidding. But but I, I think the other things have been have been manageable um, for me. Shall I? Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I think that that is definitely sometimes been a challenge in my career is just finding the the space and the voice to be your authentic self. I will say it seems a lot easier nowadays <laughs> than it has been in previous years. And the um, the only other thing I thought about, and I'm just being honest, people, um, and I'm a people person, but people are going to be a challenge because you're not going to enjoy working for every manager. You're not going to enjoy working with every teammate. 
but you have you can never lo- lose sight of the goal and that is you still have to be a team player you still have to collaborate you still have to work together so that's where that finding that common ground and that having that courtesy um, and exhibiting it to everybody that you encounter will help you along the way there are going to be some people I'm not going to lie that you're going to when you see them coming, you're going to well, I want to walk in the other direction just because you don't jail with them. You don't mess. You're not vibing. But um, it's it's part of life and it's part of the work and professional environment. You're not going to get along with everybody, but you still have to remain professional. You never lose sight of the goal. Bring yourself and what you bring to the table and you show up. And, you know, let them show up however they show up to everybody else. So be concerned with how you show up and how you're per- perceived and, and how you're presenting um, yourself to the team or managers. But that's just being honest. I'd say people along the way can give you some challenges. Right, because you, you, you don't want to that point, Shalane. You don't want anyone to take you out of and off of your personal brand. So if your personal brand is being poised and professional and being collaborative, um, and, and being able to work with the team and lead a team, you don't want uh, personalities to interfere with that, uh, that that may not necessarily connect with yours. You figure out how do you um, value other people's perspectives and what do you pull from that and what do you just leave behind because you're not accepting that and you just keep it moving. Yeah, and one last point, like, people are watching <laughs> like people are watching for your how you react to things how you interact with others whether it's your manager coworker colleagues and honestly sometimes how you react to situations could open doors for you for other opportunities if you show up well so just be mindful somebody is always watching Someone is always watching. Thank you so much. Um, Before we hand it back over to Dewey, I would love to hear some closing thoughts from each of you. I think, does Betsy have her hand raised before we close out? Oh, yeah. I I just wanted to make one comment. And it's, it's about how you show up. And I just wanted to tell a super quick story. And I know you told a story about the elevator and <clears throat> this is a story from when I very, very, very first started work. And you told a story about how you, you were in the elevator with the CEO and you knew what you wanted to say and you were confident and you didn't look at your shoes. And one of my colleagues actually was flying on a business trip and was wearing shorts and a t-shirt. And the CEO, I don't, some, some of you Wachoviaites may remember the name John Medlin. So John Medlin, who was the CEO of Wachovia for ages, happened to be on that same flight and said hello to the guy. And, and John found out that he had been, he was a Wachovia employee and he then was a Wachovia employee because he was not representing the brand well. Now, again, this was 35 years ago, but when we talk about representing yourself and always showing yourself as effectively as possible, and it made me think of it because when we said everybody is watching, you just never know. Now, he was wearing cutoff jeans and, you know, just a ratty t-shirt. It wasn't like he was wearing, you know, dress, dress shorts and a polo. I mean, it was totally bad outfit for sure. But you just never know who's watching. You Mm -hmm. never know when the CEO is going to be in the elevator or on the plane or waiting for a cab or waiting for an Uber. So you just always have to be mindful. That's That just made me think of that. So thank you for indulging me. (laughs) So, So Betsy, both you and Shalane have both quoted Rockwell. So scholars, you don't know who Rockwell is, but you can go onto your devices or jump on it. Just type in watching Rockwell and then you'll, uh, you'll, you'll get to your stuff. And that's totally an 80s joke, by the way, too. So uh, the scholars are way too young to understand Rockwell. So yes, actually, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, I enjoyed I'm, it. Thank I'm glad you. you got it. And you got to listen to that song because it's a special person doing the background vocals on it. I'd, I'd love for somebody to inbox me if you actually listen to it. I'd like to tell me who's singing background vocals without looking it up. Uh, other actually take this away from me. Get them closing thoughts, please. <laughs> closing thoughts, ladies. 
Okay, so I, I'll go first. Um, I would just say, you know, life is a journey. It's not a destination. Learn everything you can along the way from everyone you encounter. There is always some wisdom, knowledge, guidance you can uh, glean from a conversation. It could be a complete stranger and you'd be surprised how much you can learn. And just um, continue. Like I'm a learner. So I don't know if you've taken strengths finders or have heard of that. Like that's my number one. Like mm. I'm a nerd. I like learning. Like it's fun to me. Like the minute I don't want to read a book or or learn something new, everybody needs to be concerned because it's like exhilarating. I love it. So just embrace the fact that you need to learn along the way and building your personal and leadership brand is so important on like who you are as a person, as an individual and what you want to accomplish and how you want to show up. And so I would say, take the time to put in some work, develop it, hone in on it, but then don't be afraid to, you know, shake it up and, and, and pivot and, and have a completely new personal brand if that meets your needs at the time. So that would be my advice. Michelle. The only other thing I would add is just be authentic, right? To remember that your personal brand, um, don't build a brand that doesn't genuinely represent you. So make sure you're being authentic and really being honest with yourself about how you want to show up and what you want to be known for and, and to, to do everything um, to make sure that that is, that is who you are representing or what you are representing. Um, and don't be afraid to fail. I think Shalane mentioned it earlier. It is definitely okay. I think it those mistakes turn into opportunities and to build character and to um, teach us something. So I would I would offer to um, to give it a shot and, and put in some work. Thanks, Dewey. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you. Ashley, thank you for masterful facilitation there of, of the Q&A. And Shalane, Michelle, my goodness, this is like a 301 level course. This is not a 101, this is not a 101 level class to get today, team. You, you're getting the real string. Ladies, I do have a follow-up question on this one. Let's say that a scholar was not in a position to submit a question today. Would you all be okay taking some additional questions, maybe via via LinkedIn or putting together a 15 minute Zoom pull up with, with anyone that could not submit a question today. Absolutely. Most, most definitely, yes. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. We yeah. give you permission to charge them double for, uh, for those <laughs> sessions, double what they paid here for, for the entry fee for today. Ladies and gentlemen, again, that's uh, Michelle Devane Brown and also Shalane Carter. Please catch up with them. And as we mentioned before, if, if you take some of these nuggets uh, away or something that Betsy mentioned or, or something to actually post, drop that onto your social media handles. Use those hashtags and let's share the information with others that may benefit from a powerful Q&A. And a special thanks, scholars, and to all of our participants for submitting those, those questions. All right, we're going to end a few minutes early today uh, around things. So we're going to jump over and pivot into our reminders with things. Just a quick reminder here on the next slide, you've got our QR code again. This one works in a similar way to the one that we had for the LinkedIn profiles earlier. So please click on, use your smart device, hit that QR code, and it's going to take you out to our survey. We're always interested in your feedback and in comments. So please, please, please take a couple of moments, complete that survey for us. I think it's eight or 10 questions that Barbara and Angel and the team have put together. So it's really simple, but it will be valuable for us as we continue to build these sessions out in the days ahead. So special thanks uh, to anyone that's, that's getting us submitted now. We definitely, definitely appreciate it. Hey, on the next slide, let's give you some reminders about kind of where we're headed. This is the link to the playback. Again, several folks have asked about how you access the playback or a copy of today's deck. You can actually jump onto the great TMCF YouTube channel and you can grab that content. Same rules apply. If you love something in it, share it with your classmates. Pass it along to the folks on the debate team or on the club soccer team or the gospel choir, wherever they are. Pass it along to others that you think can benefit from it. I think some really, really good resources there. And again, those are available on demand. Let's say give us, I don't know, Jeremy, a week and a half, two weeks or so by then. It'll certainly be out there for, for everyone to be able to check out. 
The next slide will spotlight for you kind of everything we've covered off on. So you see the first half of the year's topics. And then on the next slide, you'll actually see everything that's left. We got nine completed after today, nine completed. Uh, and so we've got three more to go. Really excited about the conversation that we're going to have in September. More of a panel format as we bring in some leaders to talk about their graduate school process. We're going to have folks that had an undergraduate degree and then went back and, and got an MBA. We're going to have folks that went maybe directly into law school right after and, and just charted all kinds of pathways. So we're pretty excited about the concept that we'll be sharing on the 22nd of September. October 20, get smart about credit month. We're going to be talking about credit matters that matter and unpacking some of those pieces for you all as you're building credit for the future and just being aware of the good things that credit can do for you and some of the pitfalls maybe that you should consider consider avoiding along your credit building journey. Then we'll end things early in November uh, with our always fun discussion around social media smarts for today's digital world. You all are truly digital natives. You all have been using technology for as long as you've been alive for the most part. And so there'll be lots of great, great items to, to discuss and unpack during, during that time and during that session. Final reminders here, from a resources perspective, we've got some really great resources, ways to connect in with our talent community. It's a really simple Google search for you. goes out uh, to, to, to give you information about all the different career pathways that, that are out there and available. Huge shout out to our buddies over at Tuition Funding Sources, Richard and his team. A lot of times you all will get emails from them relative to our programming. So be sure to check out TFS. It's an aggregator of sorts and gives you lots of good information about careers and excuse me, not about careers, but more about more about scholarship dollars that are available for you. So plug into TFS and some great, great resources out there. To any of our folks that are in the military community, A, first of all, thank you so much for your service. And B, get connected with our with our good friend Sean Passmore and the team managing the military recruitment efforts here within Wells Fargo. You've got their direct email address. You can send information over to them directly and in turn stay in contact in those kinds of spaces. And then last but not least, another gentle reminder around the resources that are available for you with, with Beyond College. Um, you know, a lot of good, good pieces here. Um, I'm debating. Ladies, we got one more question in the chat. Really wanted to take one more before we close them out. Sure. sure. You all touched on this a little bit earlier. Just unpack this one just in 45 seconds or less for each of you. From a personal brand perspective, does it evolve based on your life experiences? And if so, how do you balance through the controls that, you, that need to be in place? Again, as you're building your personal brand and, and living you know, this wonderful thing called life. <laughs> it's a good one to end on. I know we got you close to thought earlier, but the, Scott yeah. just dropped this one into the chat. So It's a good one. I think it does evolve, but I think it evolves more so. I mean, experience could definitely be one reason for the evolution. But I think it's the mm -hmm. end game, the goal. What are you trying to accomplish? That's really where the evolution lies for me in the way I've changed my personal brand over the years. What am I trying to accomplish? And that's what drives how I want to show up and what I want people to know about myself. Um, Michelle? I, I, I would agree. I think it's it's experience and it's your, your goals and objectives change, right? So it it will it will evolve it evolve it should evolve um, and as you as you become more knowledgeable as you learn more and get more in tune to yourself and where your passions are it will yeah. evolve. And so, a person that meets you met you fifteen years ago and then meets you today you may see a whole different person. Different person, guaranteed. I see a different person. So it sounds like that's a natural process around things. So again, scholars, thank you for submitting that question. And team, thanks for letting me call you back on the mic here uh, for, for that bonus item. Last item, team, for me, again, is a reminder here around the charting a path to graduate school discussion. Really excited about the content that we'll be sharing on September the 22nd, 4 p.m. Eastern time kickoff for that program. Relative to thank you, certainly want to thank Shalane, certainly want to thank Michelle, certainly want to thank Angel and Barbara, who are, are both in the background, but literally, I work for them. Let's not get it twisted. They're the ones that pulled off of these, these amazing events for us. So just salutes to these uh, amazing leaders who 
for, for the great work that they've done. And our thank yous from the TMCF side. Certainly want to thank Ashley for her kickoff and what she shared, as well as Betsy for her comments around uh, the great work the TMCF is doing. We've got Jeremy in the background. He's the one who makes all the magic happen relative to our to a look and feel for the technology side of things. And last but certainly not least, our buddy Noel. Noel, once again, friend, you, you've delivered things at a super, super high level. So thank you so much for, for all that you do to, to make these webinars so exciting. With that said, let's continue to have a great semester. Everyone, we look forward to seeing you in about a month for our discussions around charting a path to graduate school. Whether you're thinking about it or have already applied and have been accepted, come join us because we're going to have great folks sharing perspective along those lines. With that said, I'm Dewey Norwood. Honor and a privilege to be able to be with you all today. Please continue to stay safe. Have a great semester. And we'll see you back for next month's installment of the groundbreaking Beyond College webinar series. Till next time, everybody. Good night.